I started out, I was going to have a little series on this 50D50U uh, White Rogers Spark Ignition Control. And I got to kind of figuring out what I was going to do on this to demonstrate this thing. And I thought maybe I better start out with kind of a general explanation of ignition controls and what this is actually for and what it's not for. Okay, I've got a couple of controls here. This one here, this is an integrated furnace control. Now that's going to be used for uh, most furnaces since around oh, the middle 90s. Uh, this this controls everything on the furnace. It controls the inducer and it controls the circulating fan and the flame safety control. All of it's inside this. And that's common for furnaces. Before this became popular, we had controls like these two here. This is a Honeywell S86 and this is a G67 uh, Johnson controls. Those were spark, or those were, they could have been spark igniters. Um, those were controls that only controlled the ignition. They were a flame safety control. It meant that they would only allow flame to come on when it was safe. Okay, that's what this control is made to replace. This control is for furnaces. These controls here are used for burners of assorted type. Uh, they could be furnaces. They could be other types of burners, overhead heaters for shops, uh, you know, uh, things that are in restaurants, heating devices in restaurants and stuff. They have to have some si sort of flame safety control so that the flame only operates when it uh, is safe for it to operate. Okay. This is a general replacement that will replace a whole bunch of these. It, it, there's six or eight hundred of these different types of controls uh, that it'll replace. Now, the two types of controls that are involved here are intermittent pilot. Okay, both of these are intermittent pilot controls. I'll explain direct spark in a minute, but this is one of the early controls that came out in the 80s for the most part. What they were trying to do at that point, most furnaces had standing pilots. Well, the standing pilot, of course, burned gas all the time. And in order to save energy and actually make it a safer furnace, they came up with these type of controls. What they do is the pilot is off until there's a call for heat. When you get the call for heat, there will be a sparker in this thing that will spark at the pilot light and it will light the pilot. Okay, the pilot comes on, but the it will not allow the furnace to come on until there's an electronic proving by these devices. That's why they're here. So it has to prove the pilot is on through an electronic circuit. That's, these are called flame safety controls so that they're not going to operate unless there is flame in the pilot ready to go. Okay. So these were very common in the 80s in furnaces, and they're still widely used in, in other burners. The one that's not here is a direct spark ignition. Direct spark ignition is very similar to these, look very similar to them, except instead of lighting a pilot, they actually light the main burner. So the main burner comes on and uh, with the spark. The difference between this type that lights a pilot and the direct spark, the direct spark is much larger. 
Uh, it's a more powerful spark uh, control and uh, it'll only spark for a short period of time, usually somewhere between four and seven seconds. These things will actually, if they're going to try to light the pilot, they'll op operate for, well this one here is set for 90 seconds. It's going to try to light that ignition, light that spark for the pilot for 90 seconds. Okay, if it does not ignite, it shuts off and then it starts up again. There's usually a small time period between when it retries. Now you just don't notice it says continuous retry. The reason I'm saying all this stuff is because these things were different in the way they're set up. Some of these would spark for 90 seconds and then they'd shut off and wouldn't come back on again. Some would come back on. Uh, there were various ways of setting these things up. But for the most part, these control, you, when you bought this control, it was set up a certain way and that's it. Some of them had little tabs you could put on them to, to change some of the parameters. But for the most part, they were just like this and you just had to replace the control. So, why Rogers come up with this little guy and it has replaced all the rest of these things with one that generally does everything. You know, it, uh, it'll do direct spark, it'll do uh, intermittent pilot, and you can set it up for a continuous retry, you can set it up for trial for ignition for certain amounts of time and so on. So this is a control that's probably gonna replace most of the rest of these for in stock, uh, truck stock. So hopefully you have some sort of uh, idea of what these things are supposed to do. So the one you run onto something that can be replaced with this, that you may have for truck stock, you'll know what it can replace. There's a whole list of, of, uh, of these controls that can be replaced with this one. And in the next video, I'll go into uh, how this thing actually works and hopefully how you set it up. That's it on this one.